Game on. This is Travis MCP, and you're watching Glenn's Retro Show on YouTube. Game on. Hi everybody, thank you for joining me on today's edition of Glenn's Retro Show. Today I'm just going to be doing a small little uh, Kickstarter update for the people that backed my Star Wars Yoke project. Uh, I just got in my first uh, sample of a production unit. Again, this is just a sample of a production unit. We still have a little bit more things to do on it. But let's get into the video. We'll talk about some of the new features in there and get some gameplay in it. Let's get started. So of course we're going to start with the Arcade 1-Up Star Wars. And they did a nice job with their yoke. It's very functional. It's all plastic, but it does work. But it still uses old technology. Simple potentiometers to get your directions on there. But, again, it's not bad for the price of the machine. And I think they did a nice job. So next we have the Glenn's Retro Show original prototype Star Wars Atari yoke. Made out of metal. Weighs in at about 9 pounds. It is solid. Uh, you know, it had these red buttons on it, which didn't look too bad, but it definitely didn't look like the, ar the arcade machine. And instead of using the old potentiometer technology that Arcade 1UP uses, or the original arcade, uh, we went with the Hall Effect technology, similar as the Glenn's Retro Show Spinner. No gears to break or wear out, potentiometers that need cleaning, uh, nothing along those lines. And it has a USB interface, so it plug right into your, you know, your computer in any way, shape, or form. But it was just a base point, just to get started, try everything out, make sure everything's working okay. Okay. So here's the first production sample unit we have here. We've improved the, uh, the look of the handles here. You can see the buttons now are no longer red. They more closely match what you would have had on the original machine. Also, you can see it's on the Arcade 1UP, that style here. Uh, still a metal design, still using the magnetic technology. Now the, the label here is just one I printed myself. It's just regular paper and I double-sided taped on, just to give you an idea what it's gonna look like. So what we basically have done is right now we do have it still as an analog uh, joystick on here right now but we've added the uh, there's actually two mouse modes there's a mouse mode that will always stay in the center of the screen and of course you know it'll come back when you uh, move it back another one is as you move the joystick the mouse will travel and stop travel and stop wherever you leave it so you have two options on there and basically we've added three buttons on the back so if I get a shot of it here I'm gonna try and get a shot of it anyway if we can here is uh, the power button right here. This will actually turn the machine on and off. So if you're switching between the, uh, the joystick or the, the mouse modes, you would turn this off and hold down another button on the bottom uh, to do it. You don't have to unplug the USB cable, just a power button right here. Now on the underside of the unit, if I can get a shot here, it's a little hard to see, but see there's a green button right here. So this is a number I think it's number seven on this side and then over here on the other side of the yoke is number eight so these are actually additional buttons so when you're playing a game and you have you know one two three four five six so that technically you have six independent buttons now on the yoke but when you hold down this button over here uh, when you first turn it on you'll switch it between the uh, the mouse mode or the joystick mode or the secondary mouse mode. Now on this button under here, if you hold this one for 10 seconds, it'll switch when you go pressing forward, your ship should go down, right? So you press forward, the ship will go down, pull back, your ship should go up. But we can invert it, so pressing forward like this will actually make your ship go up and pulling back will actually make your ship go down. Again, it just depends on, on the game that you're playing. So that's really it now. We uh, were originally shooting for July, and obviously we're in July right now to get this out. But between uh, the, the COVID pandemic and the manufacturing plants, and I want to make sure that the, the mouse modes and joystick modes are working in a way that I feel are perfect. Because right now there's still a little work that can be done on the software side. We're actually going to probably push this back till a September release. Um, we could potentially get it in August, but I don't want to take a chance saying that and then we slip in September. I'm going to say September is probably going to be the, uh, the time frame for the release. So we did miss the mark by a little bit. 
but you know if the if the pandemic did not happen we probably would have made it but i also want to make sure this is done right and gets in your hands proper so that's really it a quick uh rundown right now i'll probably do a, a live stream at some point uh, with some gameplay on this but uh for anyone looking for an update i would say at this point we're going to be shooting for september to get these produced and this is more or less the final design you're going to see as far as how it looks and uh, the functionality is all working so that's really it guys just wanted to give you an update because i know we we're shooting for uh the uh, july or august time frame so it really looks like it'll be september i say that's a more realistic uh time frame um and that's it so i am sorry we did miss the july time frame but you know we want to make sure this is right and also there's some things that have obviously been out of our control so that's really it everyone i want to thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for more updates on the actual release date time and some gameplay thanks for watching Tiny Arcade fan page. Remember, don't admire people too much. They'll disappoint you. Sit, blue, blue, sit. Good dog.